Good morning and welcome to the ESI Africa Media Lounge here at African Utility Week. I'm Claire Falkvane, Managing Editor of Spintelligent Publishing, and with me today we have James van der Vault, who is the CEO of Solar Turtle. Now, James, thank you first of all for being here. Oh, really appreciate you. your time. Can you ex briefly explain who or what Solar Turtle is and why the model uh, that you use was seen as viable? Well, first of all, we're a social business, so we focus on giving the power of tomorrow to those who are powerless today. And how we're going to do it is we're going to start solar kiosks, but ultra-secure ones that we call turtles. Now, as you think about a turtle, what do turtles do when they're threatened? They climb into their shell, and then they hide away and wait for the bad guys to go away. And when you look at South Africa or Southern Africa, or Africa in general is what are we very much defined by? Is people in the foreign world think of us as unsafe, insecure, and us as a women empowerment company, we must make little businesses that's actually secure for women to sell electricity on the ground. So that's what we want to do. Start small little businesses with solar turtles and rural communities for women. So, you've obviously been working quite extensively in Africa at the moment. And I was wondering if you could talk us through perhaps one of your successes and what the, what the timeline looked like for that success. All right, well, let me tell you about uh, the pilot that we rolled out in 2015. Uh, we worked together with Sanedi and Tia and Stanbul University, as well as the Department of Science and Technologies, to specifically roll out a program to do ICT charging, charging of devices. So what government wants to do is they want to replace all the tablets in rural schools, with, uh, all the textbooks in rural schools with tablets, so they can do e-learning. Great idea. But as soon as they put electricity out there, the solar panels get stolen, the copper, the copper wires get stolen, and then the school has to run on generators again. And you can't charge e-learning devices on generators. So the government said, like, please, we need a solution. How do we securely power schools and charge all these tablets? And that is where the solar turtle came in. And in 2015, we rolled out our first container-based flip-open solar kiosk design. So what made it unique, why the model, to get back to the previous question, what made the model so successful is that we actually secure the solar solution. So solar panels are not left outside where the tortoises can steal it at night. The whole thing falls away in itself like a turtle. And then in the morning when the lady arrives at a little business, she unlocks the container, goes inside, unlocks the solar panels, which then flips open like a book. And then she pushes it up with gas springs, like almost like a garage door. So you only need to push it up a little, it goes into position, and now it can harvest the rays of the sun, making power for her, which she then uses to charge all these devices for the school and power the school. And instead of giving this money now to ESCOM, she takes this money. Now she's the green entrepreneur, the turtlepreneur, as we call it. Now this little business that we launched in 2015 has been running now for the last two years in the Eastern Cape, close to Coffee Bay in a rural school. Uh, where it gives about power for about 3,000 kids that don't have any electricity. And it's been successful ever since. I mean, we got that initial grant to build the container and set up the little business. And since then, it's been paying salaries and making profit and buying stock and expanding their business as well. So the lady is actually taking this thing, is actually telling like, oh, I'm not just going to sell electricity. She's added a printer inside and she's added a little uh, uh, fridge inside. She's selling lollipops and ice creams and all things that you can think of for kids at school. So she's becoming a more and more integrated into the community, which is what we want. We want the communities to make it their own. Is this system only being used by the school kids or are there other people within the community that are using it to charge their own devices. Yeah, no, that's exactly it. No, no. We started with school because the kids are always more technology advanced. You can see every kid in their rural community has a cell phone. You know, but if you want to get new technologies like solar into households, kids is a much easier route in. So we promote it with them and they take, hey mom, look, there's a thing at school. You can go buy a solar panel at school now and get electricity at home. Like, oh, okay, well, what is this solar thing? And the kids will be able to explain it because they very when it comes to technology. So that is our strategy. Target the schools with new technology and the rest will flow naturally. And the community will, as was shown, the community comes and uses it. I mean, they are primary buyers of electricity when the school closes over the holidays. And it's the only people that buy electricity from us would be the rest of the community. That's such a wonderful story. So I do have to ask, what are some of the key lessons that you've learned along this journey? 
uh, I'll tell you now what happened last year, because that just gives you a good idea. Because we know, well, we're going to be super secure, we're going to be so safe, you know, we must keep women safe. And what happened last year, they wanted to burn down all the schools. And you know, we South lost something like 23 schools, our universities got burned to the ground as yeah. well, and our school was no exception. So the angry mob showed up at the school and said, like, we demand services, we don't have electricity, running water, there's no roads, there's nothing here, and government's been promising us for ages. Let's just burn down the school, that'll get their attention, you know? And it was literally like five minutes. They showed up and they came to the container, and our container is right on the school grounds, and they said, like, listen, we're taking control of the school, get out. So the ladies just closed themselves into the container and waited for the, for the bad guys to go away, which is how it's intended to work. But they didn't have time to like, oh, let's go outside and quickly fold away the solar panels. There's five minutes. You don't have that time and you're scared. You run away. Yeah. So the first lesson we learned is we now need, there's a the, the demand for an automated system. You, you don't have time. You press the button, let the thing close in by itself, and you wait inside the shell and wait for the bad guys to go away. So lesson one is automation is now key. Use this technology, use this power that we got. You know, there's no extra money involved in make using that electricity and making a thing fall away itself. And it's not that difficult to maintain as well. So we're busy now with a new design for them and we're rolling it out in Philippi in the next couple of months to test this automated, press the button like a transformer, press the button, <laughs> and the whole thing falls away and you just wait for the bad guys in the mornings, you press the button, it falls open again. So that was number one. Uh, Another two is this thing about entrepreneurship in South Africa. It's, it's a very, very difficult, especially in the women community. You know, if you think it's South Africans, South Africans feel like if I'm working for myself, then actually, you know, I'm not good. I, if I'm a really good, productive South African, I will be having a good job. A good job defines my status. Yes. It's a status symbol. And that's a big problem for entrepreneurship because nobody wants to go and work for themselves because they will be looked down upon. And that is a problem that we have to address. And that is one of the key things that I want to do with the solar turtle. Why is a woman empowerment thing? Empower them, make champions in the next generation. Again, schools, the next generation can be different. Maybe they won't look upon entrepreneurship as the, as the down, you know, down in the dumps thing. And maybe they also, the women will see, ah, there's a woman running this business. Maybe I can be an entrepreneur. And that's that insp insp inspiration that's really what is driving this whole, this solar business. So it must be quite, quite good to feel that not only are you providing a, a very useful service to a community, but that you are actually empowering and uh, sharing capacity building with more than a single person. I mean, you, you literally are, are in a position where you could be changing a generation's exactly. outlook. Exactly. We want to take care of the world, take care of the caregivers. All the research have shown that if you give them money to them, the men in the community, they're the first ones to show up and, ooh, ooh, I'll do it. They're the first ones to run away as soon as like, oh, okay, got enough now, let's go drink, you know, let's go party. <laughs> if you give them money to a woman, all the research has shown, they're more likely to take that money and invest it in their own community, in yeah. their own households. You know, they make sure the kids are fed, they make sure they have their uniforms for school, you know, have a good education, have a good house. That stuff is for women important. So it makes stupid sense if you're not going to support them if you want to do real impact in communities. And I do have to ask, how have the children reacted to having this opportunity? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's phenomenal actually. Um, teenagers, what's the most important thing for a teenager? Their phone. They rather go on, the, the kids get, the, you know, their parents give them a little bit of money to go buy their food for the day at, at school. What do they spend their money on? They rather go and spend their money to recharge their phone at the solar turtle and go buy the food for the day. They can live on a couple of dry pieces of bread. Phone must be charged at yeah. all times. That's more important than anything. It's interesting as humans. <laughs> so my last question for this morning um, is, tell me about the Africa Prize. Yeah, no, that is a bit of very exciting news. So we're one of the finalists. Uh, it's social businesses, African businesses that's working in the impact space, if you want to call it, that's really making a difference. So the Royal Academy of Engineering has now received, I think, something like 800 applicants, which they then thinned down to about 16, and we're one of those 16 finalists. So since last year, it's about a six months course that they're taking as an accelerator, business accelerator, taking us, telling us how to present, how to look at your business models, you know, 
think business, you know, because a lot of us are social people. Yes. We think about how we want to change the world, but financial models doesn't always come easily to us. Mm. And also the networking, they like, we're small, we don't know anybody. So they say like, oh, come, we'll introduce you to Shell, we'll introduce you now to, to the German consulate, we'll introduce you to this person and that person. And they've opened so many doors. And um, through, the, through the networks, we already received this, this Philippi project that I told you about, the Royal Academy of Engineering is gonna be funding that. So already this, this networks that they've opened up is uh, evolving us as a social business as well. So we're going back now to the finals now in Nairobi, next okay. flying on Sunday, uh, where we're gonna now see who's gonna be the final three people who's gonna finally take home the prize. Well, I certainly hope that we're going to find out. And uh, if you're wanting to know how Solar Turtle do did, be sure to have a look on the ESI Africa website. James, unfortunately, that is pretty much all that we have for today. But thank you so much for taking the time thank to, you very much. to talk to us. And I look forward to seeing your journey and yeah. seeing where it, where it takes you. Yeah, I'll come and see the one in Philippi, which we're going to launch it probably in August, if it all goes to work. It's going to be amazing to come and see it fold away by itself. And it's on our doorsteps for a change. Thank you. I'll take you <laughs> up on that. <laughs> right. So coming to you from African Utility Week, I'm Claire Falkvane. Thanks so much for watching.